Uh, let me tell you a little about myself. Uh, my name's Bill Hene. I've lived in Barrington for um, 26 years now. Uh, I practice law downtown Chicago and uh, teach at one of the law schools there, Chicago Kent. The um, motivation was that I was asked by uh, Patty Maroney, who was then heading up the 50th anniversary of the founding of Barrington Hills, to write some sort of pageant or, or something that would, uh, would suitably commemorate the founding. And then I got to thinking about uh, the history and how did it actually happen. And I discovered that the uh, people who were the founders of Barrington Hills uh, had two things in common. Two things in common that were unique. And the first one was that they were all members of the fox hunt. And the second was that most all of them were members of a play reading group. In Barrington Hills, since the 1940s during World War II, uh, there's been a play reading group. People would go once a month to someone's home or to the country club and put on a play. It seemed to me perfectly sensible to basically do a play reading, but we then had to have a play. So I started doing some research uh, about the people who lived in Barrington at the time. And that's where I got into the history. Uh, I worked many, many hours here at the uh, library, um, looking through uh, archives and uh, old copies of the Barrington Courier Review from the, from the 50s. Uh, I went to the Barrington Historical Society. And, uh, and most importantly, I spent a lot of time interviewing people who either personally had had something to do with the founding of Barrington or were the children of people who had helped found Barrington. And, um, and from that I began to get a sense of who the people were who had participated in it, what they were like as human beings, um, what their funny little attributes were. Uh, and then I started trying to weave that together with the actual history, the sort of legal history of how the, the village came into being. So I had a, a play rehearsal going on, and then the people from the fox hunt came in to talk about their problems with what was going on and, and what the problems were with the area they lived in. And so all of these people together would be interacting and from this interaction, they would come to the conclusion, hey, not let's put on a show, but hey, let's put on a village. The most interesting thing about all this was the men and the women who were involved in that. They were, they were all very unique individuals. Um, uh, Noni Bard, that's a, a, a woman who was uh, one of the early graduates from Stanford University uh, and was um, uh, one of the first uh, members uh, of, of the, um, the village council. Uh, and uh, Jean Fentress was a great actress. Uh, she was really the, the life of the Barrington Play Reading Group. And to this day, they, they, the best actress award is called the Fentress Award. Tony Bateman, whose family gives the name Bateman Road, uh, was played by Brian McManus. Harold Smith uh, was the, the man who was the president of uh, Illinois Tool Works, one of the great industrial operations here, and his brothers ran the Northern Trust. Jerry Corbett, who was played by Jim Boris, who was the, uh, the principal of the uh, middle school here in Barrington for a number of years. Tom White um, just passed away within the past year uh, and was, uh, was a, a great huntsman in the, in the fox, fox hunt. Uh, George Van Hagen is still alive, uh, a great World War II hero. So he was, um, uh, he was, it was fascinating to me to talk to both him and Tom White in detail about what was going on. Uh, and one of the fun things was that, that many of the people who were performers in the play were related to uh, people who were 
<laughs> the real characters involved. I think that the, the spirit of you know, a gracious lifestyle, preservation of the environment, the nature, uh, the beauty of, of the land, uh, I think all those things were what they were trying to preserve, and I think they would be very happy that we still have in Barrington Hills uh, that kind of, of lifestyle that still exists. You may want to know where the name of the play came from. They always were laughing. Um, when I was interviewing one of the uh, daughters of someone who was very much involved in the uh, formation of Barrington Hills, a man named Rusty McLaughlin, I was talking to his daughter, Eway McLaughlin, who still lives here and is a member of one of the play reading groups. And we were talking about her father and about their friends and, and, and what life was like when she was growing up in the 1950s. Um, and she made a, a remark to me, which I actually quote on the program, one thing I remember about my parents and their friends when I was growing up, they always were laughing. And I thought that was such a perfect way to describe this whole scene that I was trying to imagine because that's the way I perceived them. They were, they were doing important things in their business life, they were doing important things in their community life, and at the same time they had a great time. They always were laughing. 